We're back. We're live, and it's Wednesday. Think Tech Now. Think Tech Forever. And Think Tech joins Chantelle Seville, who is the host of Savvy Chicks. Some people say she is the original Savvy Chick, and, I, and I'm one of them. I say that. And she's, uh, she's on with us through Skype at Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. She's on vacation, but the show must go on. So she, so she is joining us from Fisherman's Wharf by Skype. Thank you for doing this, Chantel. Thank you so much, Jay, for being in my corner this week. <laughs> You're a real savvy chick over there. And we're going to talk about uh, Chantel's trip, because she took a trip mostly to Canada. Oh, Canada. Isn't that the national anthem? Oh, Canada. Can you sing the rest? No, I can't sing it, but that's the name of it, right? <laughs> that's the one. I'm just going to see if I can put you on my uh, said because I think I'm breaking up. Okay. Is it breaking up on your end? Oh, no, it's fine. Okay, anyway, uh, so that's Chantel's going to tell us about a trip to uh, Canada, uh, A, and um, we're going to learn where she went, what she did, and the mood in Canada, especially in these difficult times. But before we get to that, Chantel, let me take a moment and tell you what happened on the way to the forum this morning. I'm coming down the Polly Highway. And I'm at the intersection of the Poly Highway and what? King Street. Um, and it's when or where, you know, the Poly hits downtown. And there's a there's a, a fifty year old Chinese man, looks like a businessman, and he's crossing in the crosswalk, right? And all of a sudden he stops. He stops and he sees something in the medial strip. And he, he stops and goes to the medial strip. Now he's walking on the medial strip. And he's carrying his, you know, his business things with him. He got some kind of attache case and all the serious business guy. <clears throat> and now he's picking up trash in the medial strip. It really bothered him to see the trash there. Not one piece of trash, but dozens of pieces of trash. And he's holding these pieces of trash in his hands. And he walked by my car, so I rolled the window down. I said, good for you, man. He said, nobody appreciates this. It's important that we do this, all of us. I said, yeah, he's right. What a guy. What a medial strip. Only more people could do that. Not yeah, really. I almost got out of my car and joined him, you know, but that would have, that would have uh, created tremendous congestion. You would have missed my show. <laughs> that too. <laughs> well, on with your show. Where have you been? So I actually went to Saskatchewan, Canada, because I grew up in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, but I flew into Regina because that's where my grandma lives. So I went and saw Baba. Uh, Baba is basically grandma in Ukrainian. And I spent a week with her, and we just hung out and, you know, went to nightclubs, what you do with your grandma. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so did you miss us, Regina Chantel? Regina is beautiful, and the weather was actually quite warm. Yes, I did. I did. <laughs> okay, some pictures. So Let's nice. see some pictures now. Can, uh, tell us about your is, travel pictures. This is me pictures. and my mother. Yeah, we were just in Regina. I took, we went for a walk to get coffee. So she's a bit old now, but uh, I made her, you know, rock around and... This is the new business I'm thinking of starting, Rent-A-Granny, where you uh, rent a granny and they can carry your heavy handbag. Because often my shoulder gets sore, so I thought this was going to be a great new entrepreneurial venture. That's why, uh, I'll continue later, but this is why I went to Silicon Valley. <laughs> um, so from there, I went to Tom Baba, and then I went to Saskatoon, which is where I grew up, and spent time with my best friend. Um, her name's also Chantel. Uh -huh. So we just went and had a look at the old sites and really, it's interesting, I mean, street in Saskatoon called 20th Street and it used to be somewhere you didn't go and I have been there so long that it's amazing. There's coffee shops, cool clothing shops, that was neat to see. Yeah, it's a great um, place, isn't it? It's, it? There's something clean and wholesome about it for the most part and it's uh, so they know how to take care of their community, don't they? Yes, it's the city of Bridges, Saskatchewan. Saskatoon. This is 20th Street that I was speaking about. It's um, this new hard press studio. They do Saskatoon souvenir tops that are really cool. So I was very impressed with that. <laughs> and that, this here is my best friend Chantel and her little girl. She was my new bestie. Uh -huh. <laughs> Last year I went to Kelowna in British Columbia. And this all reminds me of Kelowna, which is a lovely city. Anyway, go ahead. This is Saskatoon. My sister and her. Uh, kids came down to visit me and me and my grandma there in China. So uh -huh. it's 
Saskatchewan, I mean, it gets to minus 40 Celsius in the winter, so it's absolutely freezing. But the summers are beautiful. And, you know, the prairies, this is the prairies, the canola fields. Something special about growing up as a prairie girl. Yeah. But I'm pretty happy in Hawaii. You've been traveling. Uh, oh, what's this? Uh, yes, so this is the ground squad. Really popular in Vancouver. I don't even know how high it is, but it took me literally over, over an hour up these steep stairs, and people do it as they exercise every day. It's an incredible hike. I think it's one of the top ten toughest in North America. Yeah. And I was climbing up it, and I got uh, far. I thought I thought I was going to be there. We to ask some people how far I was, and they said, "Oh, you're nearly halfway." Chantel, we're going to take a short break, if you don't mind. Uh, we'll be right back after this very short break. That's Chantel Seville, our host for Savvy Chicks. Hi, my name is Kim Lau, the host of Hawaii Rising. You can watch me live every other Monday at 4 p.m. Aloha. Aloha, Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at 3 in the afternoon. Do not tune in in the morning. My topic is energy efficiency. It sounds dry as heck, but it's not. We're paying $5 billion a year for imported oil. My job is to shave that, shave that, shave that down in homes and buildings while delivering better comfort, better light, better air conditioning, better everything. So if you're interested in your future, you'd better tune in to me. Three o'clock every other Monday, code green, aloha, and thank you very much. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham with The Economy and You, and I'd like to invite you each week to come watch my show each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage, which is on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock here on Think Tech. On Center Stage, I talk with artists about not only what they do and how they do it, but the meat of the conversation for me is why they do it, why we go through this. A lot of us are not making our livings doing this, and a lot of us would do this with our last dying breath if we had that choice. And that's what I love to talk to people about. I hope you enjoy watching it, and I hope you get inspired because there's an artist inside you, too. Join us on Center Stage at 2 o'clock on Wednesdays. Bye. Hey, Style Energy Man here. Make sure you tune in on my lunch hour every Friday from noon until 12.30 at least. Maybe I'll go a little long if you got good stuff to, to share with you. But we'll talk about energy, all kinds of energy. My favorite is hydrogen, and my favorite, other favorite is transportation and hydrogen. But we'll talk about all kinds of energy. Be with us every Friday at noon, Stand Energy Man. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Kawe Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. We address issues of importance for those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet. Please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. We're here with Savvy Chick, the original Savvy Chick off the Savvy Chick Show, which broadcasts on Wednesday at 11 o'clock every week. And our regular host, Chantel Seville, is in, is in uh, Fisherman's Walk when she joins us by Skype Audio now uh, to improve the reception. And we're talking about her adventures in Canada, eh? And we're talking about... Eh? Uh, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're a global traveler, and I, you know, I want to know the lessons you've learned on this trip. And you, it's okay to tell us some personal lessons, too. But uh, what have you learned? You've been away, what, a week, ten days, whatever. Um, how is it going, and, and, and what, what can you bring back in terms of wisdom? Um, I think the most important that, uh, thing that I experienced on this trip was really just spending some quality time with family. It's been, it's been short. But it's been so nice of just spending quality time with the people that mean most to you. And I think that that's really important. Sometimes life gets so busy and we get caught up doing what we're doing. And we may forget to, you know, spend quality time with people that mean most. So, you know, I know it might sound simple, but it, it is one of those things that I, I realized how important it was when I got over here. And also just to, you know, take more time to connect with your grassroots. And I think that was, that was another special part of, of going back to Canada where I'm from and, you know, just seeing, I guess, how much I've grown from, I spent a lot of time in Australia, so I haven't gone back and forth a lot in yeah. many years, yeah. so that was, 
So Never forget where you came from, I guess. <laughs> you know, but, you know, I, I imagine you sit around, you're very garrulous, and you have conversations with everybody you meet, and you meet a lot of people, and I wonder what they say about what's happening in the U.S. How do they feel about the events in the U.S.? How do they feel about the events in Britain? Can you give us a thumbnail of how Canadians are seeing these world events? Um, I mean, it, it's on the news, as always, like like it is for everything. But to be honest, I mean, I don't think, obviously, they're as affected, perhaps, as if you are in the U.S. or, or in the U.K. Um, Canadians are quite aware, but we're also a bit, a little bit not secluded, but sort of a bit removed. I mean, um, yeah, it was it was a talk on the street, but it wasn't it wasn't creating a fear factor or anything. If that if that makes sense, and I think people just want to see the world in a I mean a more united sort of way and not have to to see these types of things on the news. So, uh, I so yeah, I what are your th what what are your thoughts on it, Jay? Well, I, I'm not Canadian, although sometimes I'd like to be. Um, and, uh, you know, looking south uh, from Canada, um, I think, I think uh, Canadians generally feel that the Americans are hyperactive and that actually too much is going on in this country uh, and that they should, the Americans should just relax a little bit. Um, the, what did my, my buddy called it? The uh, uh, hyperactive states. Uh, <laughs> the excited states. I, I, I lived yeah, with a I Canadian <laughs> guy through law school, and he always called it the excited states. Um, and I think the Canadians right, you know, have, a, have a good view of that generally, and that is relax and uh, enjoy the outdoors, enjoy the environment, enjoy people and so forth, um, and don't get swept into things. Is, am I right about this? Is that the way you feel it is? I mean, that, that's the way I feel, but I guess it's, I find it challenging to even to speak on these situations because I'm, what do they call me, like a seeing with rose color glasses so I like to see what I like to see and I mean just from being around all the nature and it's, I feel that Canada is quite laid back and, and, re and relaxed Yeah, maybe a little bit like Australia yeah yeah well I, Australia and Canada have a lot in common uh, we saw some people from Canada the other day and uh, um, they're you know they feel that they're ahead of us on gun control and I, I think they are um, the, I, oh, that's cu that's the, huge. The uh, yeah, the well, uh, the gun control is a huge issue now, bigger than ever, and and uh, in, in in Australia, uh, they they gave up their guns. What I mean is, the government said you got to give up your guns now, unless you got a good reason. Uh, you can't just own a gun, any kind of gun, and uh, you got to you got to turn them in. And people did, and they were all melted down, and that was the end of the guns. Um, and so and that was very mellow. Nobody resisted. Nobody argued. They all. I mean, not, not many people, anyway. And I wonder, isn't it the same in Canada? I mean, is Canada a nation of guns, too? Somebody said that Canada has a lot of guns, but nobody uses the guns in Canada. Is this true? Well, yes, definitely. I mean, I have relatives and, and whatnot that I've been around a lot of the hunting and, and whatnot, but I guess it, maybe people just use them more responsibly, and they're also not as easy to access. I mean, you can't just walk in and grab a gun everywhere. Then, so I think that that also, also helps. But... I mean, from my, again, my personal point of view is, is it's just a deeper issue in society. I mean, of course, the guns need to be addressed. That's huge. But further to that, I mean, schools and, and, you know, with savvy chicks, and I mean, that goes for boys as well, young boys and girls and young women, I think a society who's more inspired by their future can actually develop to be a, a better society where the guns aren't an issue because the people are more empowered in you know, pursuing things that, that it inspire them and making them feel like they have a part in society and that they have a purpose and that people care about them because the types of characters who are doing these acts are actually people who are disconnected from society and themselves, and that's when these issues are created. It's not a normal person who's living a happy life that goes and gets a gun and shoots people. I mean, that's just... Yeah, I, I, that doesn't I, I mean, it's so just I a think, basic I think thing, it's yeah. something further that needs to be addressed. Yeah. Well, I mean, did you feel uh, in Canada uh, that um, um, people were disconnected and that there was a great disparity of income and, and thought? Um, I, I always saw well, Canada as fairly mild-mannered, you know, in that regard, and there wasn't a lot of anger um, around. Well, not, not necessarily. I mean, especially in Saskatchewan, it is quite a lot more laid back and relaxed. But when I did spend some time, I stayed with my brother in Vancouver, and he actually has an antique shop called Name Drop My Space 
space lab antique shop in Chinatown. So that's where he's, you know, sort of getting a bit gentrified now. There's a few cool stores here and there, but it, it still has a lot of the homelessness and, and whatnot, which obviously is a bit similar to Hawaii. So I don't know well, that there's so much now. anger in that, but it, but it is, it is an, an issue as well. And that's, you know, similar to different to that same issue of, of keeping people active and inspired from younger ages so that as they grow older, they don't have to resort to these other types of lifestyles. What about the kids? What about the kid? What about the savvy chicks kids? What about the millennial kids? Uh, what about the high school kids? Uh, how well, how they, are they like to you, and uh, how do they differ from what you see in Hawaii? Um, well, I think this is the great thing: is these, you know, these millennials and these savvy chicks and whatnot. It is a new generation of of people who are wanting to contribute more and do more and have a sense of purpose and accomplishment and just open-mindedness and I think that is exciting and the more that that positive behavior is rewarded and focused on I think then that breeds more and that's and that's what we really need to focus on as a society you know and a, and a worldview from Australia to Hawaii to Canada to America every you know everywhere well you know it strikes me from and your that, pictures that we've been watching you know while you've been talking Chantel that um, that there's a lot of great environment in Canada, a lot of big outdoors, and uh, indeed it's a, a great uh, part of the whole recreational spectrum. And, you know, I, I wanted to ask you whether people in Canada are, you know, endeared to the outdoors, whether they're environmentalists, whether they actually spend the time uh, to enjoy the outdoors, and is it, how, how ubiquitous is that feeling? I definitely think that Can Canadians are, you know, outdoor people, it's, it's, it's a cultural thing. Even when it's freezing cold in the middle of winter, we still would get outside, and I think that that's really healthy, and I think that that probably also contributes to why Canadians might seem a bit more laid back, because we do really make it a point to, uh, to spend some time outdoors, and that's, of course, not everyone, but as a general rule, we are, we are we're outdoors-type people. We love the mountains, we love the fresh air. I mean, even in Saskatchewan, we don't have mountains, but we still still get out and get amongst it. And I, I really feel that in society that's so important to, to take time to be in nature because that really allows you to recalibrate and sort of, you know, take some pressure off, take some worries off, and then let you go and start fresh again. Yeah. You know, nothing quite like the, the Rocky Mountains to do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, with all that, how, how, are, how are your medial strips? What is that? With all that, how are your medial strips? Are they clean? What's the medial me that's where the oh, Chinese yes, yes, man definitely. was picking up yep, the trash yes. this morning. Oh, I mean, yeah. We, we have yeah, plenty yeah, of trash yeah, on the yeah. media. We have tons of environmentalists in Hawaii, right? Um, but then we also have trash on the medial strips, lots of it. Um, uh, is there trash on the medial strips in Canada, in Saskatchewan? Not that I noticed, not really. I mean, of course, if you, if you look for it, but it, it doesn't appear messy. You know, it, it does appear quite clean and, and fresh and organized. And, yeah, it doesn't... No, I, I don't remember seeing any litter just yeah. thrown around everywhere. Yeah. Now you're yeah. you're. In, I remember uh, growing up, even people would report people would report people they saw littering. Uh, really good. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in Canada they would have got out of the car and helped the guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so now you left Canada after some time with your family and in, uh, in the outdoors, and you came for a transition to California, where you're in San Francisco now at Fisherman's Wharf and all that. How does that compare with Canada? Is there trash in the medial strips? Oh my gosh, it is so busy here in San Francisco. There are so many houses all stuck together. Um, it's really neat. It's the first time I, I've been here. I actually spent last night in um, Los Gatos, which is sort of in the Silicon Valley area. That's beautiful. And I mean, that there's, there's a lot of space there. There's some really neat small towns. I went all the way to Caramel with this huge, huge mansions and big, beautiful golf courses. That's gorgeous. It's a very big difference from here now in San Francisco. It's busy here. There's hustle, there's bustle, there's tourism, there's everything here. So it's, um, <laughs> it's great, though. It's, it's a great, it has a great vibe about it. <laughs> That's probably a great vacation. So these, these travels, oh, your travels in Canada, your travels in, in California and San Francisco, it's really a special city. Um, that, 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 do you find yourself asking whether you should be moving back to Canada or maybe relocating to San Francisco for whatever is offered? Well, 
Well, that's a great question you ask. I, I do feel that, you know, I've been able to experience a lot of beautiful places. And I definitely, obviously, will go back to Canada because family's there. And love to come back and spend more time in San Francisco because we actually fly back tonight. So it's not nearly enough time to, to see everything here. But Hawaii is a great place to be for the moment. I think it's a great central point between North America, like the, the mainland, and also Australia. Because, as you know, I absolutely love Australia. So... Being between both is a, is a great place to be. Plus, I get a lot of visitors in Hawaii, so I'm pretty happy to come back and, and get back to the studio because I miss I miss being in the studio for the show. <laughs> so uh, I, I won't be moving here anytime soon, but I definitely will be back. <laughs> well, what you, what, what, how will your life change? You know, I always find that you fly back to Hawaii and you you know you look out the window as you're landing in uh, Honolulu. It's, 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 a feeling always sweeps over me about how good it is to get back. And uh, how it offers so much, and you want to embrace it as you as you fly in. But I just wonder, uh, you know, have you made any resolutions? Is there anything in your life that's going to change because of your travels here in, in Canada and in San Francisco? Well, the funny thing is, it's actually been really cold here, so I haven't been for a swim since I've been here, and I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> um, as far as things to change, I mean, what I'm really realizing is with Savvy Chicks, we want to inspire and empower girls around the world. Uh, but I was actually talking about my social media strategy with my brother, and I think that the people who really resonate and relate to Savvy Chicks are, are genuinely either the, uh, the beach girls or the, the, the real sort of, like, outdoor-type girls by nature. But, I mean, anyone in general. So I think when I get back, it'll be a lot about focusing on the, the social media strategy of Savvy Chicks and taking the next steps. And very excited, before I left, we launched Mission Savvy Chicks, so to have one girl per month to feature, one, one young woman or girl to feature on, on something that they are working on. Uh, and I think I'll really um, be excited about launching that even further when I get back. So that, that makes me very excited, too, and you know, really to get these girls from all around the world. So to make Savage is very global, I guess. Yes, well, you got my note, did you? I mean, because you get email even while you're traveling, right? And my note where I suggested all kinds of uh, social media, you know, distributions so to help uh, get viewership on your show. You got that, right? I did get that, and that's, that, it was funny because that's what I was thinking of, and when that email came up, I thought, right, that's my main prerogative and focus. So anyone who is watching this, please do share it, tweet it, next time call us, because, I mean, with the Think Tech Hawaii hotline, that's just fantastic. And, I mean, some of the guests I have coming up are incredible. Last week when I interviewed the stunt woman, she has a list of guests from all around the world, including, you know, movie, female movie directors and whatnot from L.A. that I'll be interviewing in time. And, I mean, for those of you who are watching and want to, you know, get in and ask questions, don't be shy because you'll miss the opportunity if you don't take it. So I'm, you know, excited about allowing people to call in and, and ask my guests questions. Yeah. But, I mean, you can't, you can't get better than that. I mean, these are people you cannot access. Yeah. They're not your everyday person that you can just sort of, you know, find and ask a question to. It's taken me a long time to be able to find and connect with these people to, to share more inspiration with, with girls and women around the world and, and the men, too. Yeah. So, um, well, so the, yeah, that's what I'll be doing when I, when I get back. Good. Looking forward to that and looking forward to, you know, the, the series of women you're going to have and to your enhanced uh, distribution. One, one last thing. It just strikes me that you met a lot of people. You're, you're so friendly and all that, Chantel. And I wonder if there's one person on this trip, either in Canada or in California, uh, who sticks in your mind as uh, the most interesting, the, most, the best connection you've had, outside of family, is this one person that you could tell us about? Well, I'd have to say Maya and Jess. So there, Maya was a stunt woman that I interviewed, and she's just incredible. And, you know, the things she's up to and getting ready to direct movies and just their home and how they've created their absolutely savvy life. I mean, that's live the life you love. They are completely living their savvy life. They're a husband and wife team, but they, they both do separate projects as, as stunt performers. Um, and yeah, they really inspired me. I'm looking forward to connecting with them more and, and really, you know, seeing what magic can come of that. But I definitely was very excited and also inspired by my brother just to realize what an awesome community he's created. You know, went to, he had a barbecue for us at his antique shop and he just knows the most incredible people who are so understated but yet so full of wisdom and, and also connection. So there should be some more that have come of that that we can, uh, we can sort of tap into and get more. You know, there's a young guy who started a skate shop when he was 19 years old, and it's so 
so prominent in Vancouver and he has these huge events where he's got his own skate bowl in there and he's only 23 or 24 now and people come, they get a sponsor, they get 150 guys competing and winning prizes and everything, so it's, it's quite neat. Those, um, I know that's more than one, but, <laughs> but it's been quite a good trip. <laughs> I guess so. So you're back uh, in a few days. I'm, when are you coming back? back at, I'm flying back tonight, so I still have time to meet some more people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you can give us an update when you get back. And you'll be, uh, you'll be live in Honolulu in the studio next Wednesday, right, Chantel? That is correct. I have a guest, Kylie Butler, who I'll be Skyping in from Sydney, Australia, and she does inspired career coaching. So I'm really looking forward to her sharing all the different types of careers that are out there, as well as how she's helped place people and what opportunities there are for the young women and girls to get into all different types of careers you might not have even heard of. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's great that you're, you're doing Skype with Australia. It's great that we're doing Skype with you now. Uh, Savvy Chicks, a global show, a global show about women empowered. Thank you so much, Chantel. Chantel Seville, a host of our Savvy Chicks series on Wednesday at 11. Uh, aloha, and we'll see you next Wednesday.